Datura or Jimson's weed poisoning. Datura is a genus comprising nine species of poisonous plants belonging to the Solanaceae or nightshade family. These plants are notorious for containing potent anticholinergic agents, making them a significant source of both accidental and intentional poisoning. Commonly known by various names such as Jimson's weed, devil's trumpet, or moonflower, Datura species are predominantly found in dry, temperate, and subtropical regions across the globe. Their widespread distribution and distinctive appearance contribute to their potential for toxicological emergencies. Toxicology The toxicity of Datura stems from its high concentration of tropane alkaloids, primarily atropine, scopolamine, and hyoscyamine, present in all parts of the plant. These alkaloids exert their effects by disrupting the parasympathetic nervous system through competitive inhibition of acetylcholine at muscarinic receptor sites. This pharmacological action leads to the development of an anticholinergic syndrome, characterized by a constellation of symptoms affecting multiple organ systems. Understanding this mechanism of action is crucial for healthcare professionals in diagnosing and managing datura poisoning effectively. Clinical presentation. The onset of symptoms following datura ingestion typically occurs within 30 to 60 minutes, although in some cases, it may be delayed for up to three to four hours. The clinical presentation of datura poisoning is often described using the mnemonic. Blind as a bat, mad as a hatter, red as a beet, hot as a hair, dry as a bone, the bowel and bladder lose their tone, and the heart runs alone. This vivid description encapsulates the multi-system effects of anticholinergic toxicity and serves as a valuable diagnostic aid for healthcare providers encountering suspected cases of datura poisoning. Common Symptoms Datura poisoning manifests with a diverse array of symptoms affecting multiple organ systems. Neuropsychiatric disturbances are prominent, including agitation, hallucinations, delirium, and confusion. Cardiovascular effects encompass tachycardia, hypertension, and potentially life-threatening arrhythmias. Ocular manifestations include medriasis, blurred vision, and cycloplegia. Gastrointestinal symptoms present as dry mouth, nausea, and decreased bowel motility. Genitourinary effects typically involve urinary retention. Additional symptoms may include cutaneous flushing, dry skin, hyperthermia, and seizures. This comprehensive symptom profile reflects the widespread anticholinergic effects and underscores the importance of a thorough clinical assessment. Emergency Management The emergency management of datura poisoning follows a systematic approach. Stabilization and supportive care. This initial phase focuses on ensuring airway patency, monitoring respiratory function, establishing intravenous access, and closely monitoring cardiovascular status. These interventions form the cornerstone of managing any toxicological emergency. Decontamination. In cases of recent ingestion, activated charcoal administration may be considered to reduce toxin absorption. Gastric lavage might be employed in select cases involving intubated patients with large recent ingestions. However, the risks and benefits of these procedures should be carefully evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. Symptom management Symptom management in datura poisoning is tailored to the specific manifestations. Agitation and delirium are typically managed with benzodiazepines, such as lorazepam or diazepam. Hyperthermia requires aggressive cooling measures to prevent complications associated with severe temperature elevation. Seizures, if present, are also managed with benzodiazepines. Urinary retention may necessitate catheterization to prevent bladder distension and associated complications. Antidote consideration. Physostigmine, a cholinesterase inhibitor, is considered a potential antidote in severe cases of datura poisoning. However, its use is reserved for life-threatening symptoms due to the risk of adverse effects. Contraindications of physostigmine include bradydysrhythmias, intraventricular, and AV block, 
and bronchospasm. Confirm absence of conduction defect on a 12-lead ECG. Administer 0.5 to 1 mg IV as a slow push over 5 minutes and repeat every 10 minutes until the desired clinical effects are observed. It is rare for more than 4 mg to be required. Delirium may reoccur in 1 to 4 hours and repeated doses may be required. The recommended dosage for children is 0.02 mg per kilogram maximum 0.5 milligrams, given over five minutes. Close monitoring for signs of cholinergic crisis is essential, and atropine should be readily available to reverse physostigmine effects if necessary. The decision to use physostigmine should be made judiciously, weighing the potential benefits against the risks. Observation and follow-up. Patients with Dechira poisoning require close observation for at least 24 to 48 hours post-ingestion. Monitoring should focus on potential complications such as respiratory depression, cardiac arrhythmias, and seizures. While most symptoms typically resolve within this time frame, it's important to note that some neuropsychiatric effects may persist for a longer duration. The length of observation and follow-up should be individualized based on the severity of poisoning and the patient's clinical course. Prevention. Preventing Dechira poisoning involves a multifaceted approach. Public education initiatives should focus on plan identification, toxicity awareness, and avoidance techniques. Environmental control measures, such as removing Dechira plants from areas frequently accessed by children, can reduce the risk of accidental exposure. Media engagement regarding Dechira poisoning should be approached cautiously to avoid unintentionally promoting its use for recreational purposes. A balanced strategy combining education, environmental management, and responsible public communication is key to effective prevention. Take home message. Dechira poisoning presents a significant challenge in toxicological emergencies, requiring rapid recognition and treatment. A thorough understanding of its clinical presentation and management principles is crucial for healthcare professionals to improve patient outcomes. Prompt implementation of supportive care measures and targeted symptom management form the backbone of treatment. Simultaneously, preventive strategies focusing on education and environmental control play a vital role in reducing the incidence of dechira poisoning. By combining clinical expertise with preventive measures, Healthcare providers can effectively address this potentially life threatening toxicological emergency. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.